we need a way to automatically push updates to users of our Maui application. So previously we set up this GitHub Actions workflow that builds our Maui application, signs the application, publishes the application, and ultimately creates a versioned GitHub release, as we can see over here in our repository. So with this versioned release, we upload the installer and certificate for the application. But if a user installed the application in the past and wants to update their installed application, they're going to have to come back into our GitHub releases, look for the latest version and download that and run the update manually. So those steps are pretty involved. It's not really practical from a user perspective. So ideally, we need a way to automatically push the latest release of our application to users automatically. And now that we have a place where we publish versions of our application and we can identify what the latest release is, we can indeed set up automatic updates. And basically with MSIX, this is all powered by the app installer file, which we're gonna create. So I'll link this documentation in the description, but basically what this file does is tells the application how to update. So from a high level, how this works is the user's going to install our application through the app installer file that we create. And then that app installer file is gonna to point to a generic URL that's gonna contain our latest GitHub release. And then whenever the application at that latest release URL changes, then the previously installed application is basically gonna see, oh, there's a new version of the application, let me auto update based off the latest version. So it seems kind of magical and indeed it is, which is kind of a bad thing because if you do this wrong, then it's just not gonna work and it's gonna be hard to debug. But let's do it right. Let's do it right. First try, let's add auto updates through the app installer file. So in our application folder, let's add a new file here. We're going to call this the name of our application, continuous deployment dot app installer. So this app installer file is formatted in XML. So let's add some XML metadata up here. And we're going to wrap this all in the app installer tag. And we'll have to point to the app installer schema definition version 1.0.0. .0. 0. And now the first fun part. So on this app installer, we have to set a URI here that points to the latest version of our app installer file. So that latest version of the app installer file is going to be published with our latest GitHub release. But this URL, it can't be version dependent. It has to always point to whatever the latest version is. So an easy way to get the latest release URL is to hover over this latest button label thing here. And this actually points to a generic latest release URL. So if we right click this and copy the link and paste that as the URI, as we can see, this is pointing to our latest release, but specifically we want to point to the app installer file on that latest release. So we can dig into the downloads. So slash download and point to the app installer that we're eventually going to upload in our release assets. So this will ensure that we always point to the latest releases app installer file. So next up, we have to specify the main package or in this case, basically the MSIX that we want to auto update to. So that is with the main package tag. And this is where the next challenging part comes in. So on this main package, we have to specify another URL that points to our latest release MSIX. And also on this main package, we have to specify a bunch of metadata that matches the MSIX that we're trying to auto update to. And if this metadata does not match, the auto update is not going to work. So this is an important step that we don't want to get wrong here. So let's start by specifying the URL of our latest release MSIX. So that's going to be in the same place as our app installer, but instead pointing to our MSIX. Now, currently we're publishing the MSIX with like a version and the processor architecture. But again, specifically with version, this URL cannot contain a version because it's not gonna work whenever we publish a new version. So we'll have to name our MSIX something more generic. We could name it continuous deployment.msix, but I actually wanna name it auto update.msix. And I won't go into it now, but we'll actually see later why I wanna name it this instead of something like continuous deployment. So that handles the URL. Next up is the metadata. So first off, we have to specify the name of our application package. So let's see, what could that possibly be? Is it the title? Is it this application ID? Maybe it's not even in our CS project. Maybe it's in the app manifest or the package manifest. So this is something that stumped me for a while 
when I initially did this during a member live stream. And one little trick we can do, and we can do this because I already have our application installed. In PowerShell, we can run git apex package, and that actually returns a big list of all of our packages. But if we scroll through here, we didn't have to scroll too far, we can see our package name. So based on this, it does match up with our application ID. So let's grab that. Actually, let's rename it to maybe singleton dot continuous deployment and let's reference this from our app installer so more metadata next up is the publisher and we can actually grab that from this command we ran in powershell so we can see the publisher is singleton sean so common name singleton sean next up we specify the version and this is actually going to be the version of the msix that we're trying to auto update to so currently we're on version 1.2 Let's go to version 1.3, and that'll be the version that we reference in our app installer. So basically when you're releasing, this version in the app installer and the version in the CS proj should be the same in order for this to work. And last but not least, we need the processor architecture, which in our case is x64. This is basically all you need, but I also like to specify some settings here. And specifically the one I care about is the hours between update checks. I like to just set it to zero, especially in the beginning when I'm testing this. So this is it for the app installer file, as long as this works when we test it, hopefully it does. But we do need to go back into our deploy workflow and make sure that we're uploading these files to our release assets with these specific names. So in our deploy workflow, we can point to our app installer file. That's pretty straightforward. So that'll be in continuous deployment. And then we just have it sitting over here. Grab the name of that and point to it. And we don't have to rename it or anything. This matches perfectly with what we specified. Now, unfortunately, our MSIX, we will have to rename. So currently this contains the version, processor architecture, etc. And we just want to point to a generic version agnostic auto update.msix. So no big deal. We can just run some PowerShell and rename it. So let's add a new step for renaming the auto update installer. We are going to be running some PowerShell here. And we're going to call rename item and pass in the path to our msix so just copying it from down here and we want to rename it auto update.msix which means down here where we upload the msix we instead want to point to auto update.msix and actually while we're here i'd like to rename the certificate as well to just continuous deployment dot sir so let's do that. Let's just copy this step, add another one for renaming the certificate. So we're going to rename the .sir file to just continuous deployment .sir, which means we need to upload that file. Let's do that real quick. And we should be good to go. So we're going to upload the app installer, the auto update MSIX and our certificate. So let's commit these changes, adding the app installer for auto updates. Here we go. Let's push and the wait begins. There we go. We have created our release version 1.3.0. We got the auto update. We got the app installer and we got the certificate. First try feeling good. Now going back to the reason we named this auto update.msix instead of continuous deployment.msix is that if the app installer and the msix were both named continuous deployment, it might cause confusion for new users regarding which file they should download to install the application. And as we recall, in order for auto updates to work, the user has to install through the app installer file. So by naming this something like auto update, hopefully that guides users over to the app installer file. So that being said, let's download the app installer file and let me uninstall the version that I installed previously. So here we go, we don't have the application installed. Let's run the app installer. Cannot open app package, error in parsing the app package. All right, so one thing I noticed is that whenever we open this, it's just highlighted as plain text. We don't get that XML highlighting, which is kind of odd. That leads me to think that maybe there's something wrong with the encoding or the metadata for this file or just how we've typed this out. Not really sure. So what I'm going to do is bring over an app installer that I know works. So let me copy that and paste that in here. So this is the one that we made during member live streams. We know this one works and I'm going to copy over all of the data from our other app installer file. So the URLs and all of the metadata. Then I'm going to delete the old app installer file and rename this one to continuous deployment. And now if we reopen this file, it's highlighted as XML makes me think this will probably work. So hopefully you don't even run into this issue, but if you do, you should be able to just download the app installer in the source code that I link in the description and adjust that to your own application needs. So let's try this again. We are going to have to bump the version here in the app installer and the CS proj. So let's commit this, push it. 
and hope for the best. All right, let's try again. 1.3.1, grab the app installer. There we go, it worked this time. So super weird, kind of glad we got that issue. I've never seen that before, but hopefully if you see the issue, you can kind of follow what we did here and fix it. So let's install, app starts up, looks good. So now let's make a change to our application and make sure that the auto updates work. So first let's bump the version to 1.4 in the CS Proj and the app installer. And then we'll just go into the main page and instead of hello world, we'll say hello, Singleton Sean, subscribers. So let's commit all this and push. And when this deploy job finishes, we should have a version 1.4 release as our latest release. And all we'll have to do is run our application again and our application will automatically update to version 1.4.0. All right, release successful, we got 1.4.0 over here and currently we have 1.3.1 installed but let's run the application yeah there we go hello single pinch on subscribers sweet so in summary we created the app installer file which tells our application how to auto update and then we made sure to publish the app installer file with our github release so that users can download the app installer to initially install the application and automatically get updates so hopefully you can apply these concepts to your own Mali application to automatically push updates to your users.